we are going to talk today about pulling money out of file cabinets <laughs> or out of your CRM or whatever you are using to organize your customer information. There is a lot of money to be made from past customers. And um, I want to show you how to do that. Um, it's something we're actually very good at here at G4 Marketing. And um, so later, um, I am going to show you, if you want, how we can help do some of this for you. But I'm going to walk you through step by step how to do it, um, why it's important, why you need to do it. And um, I think that's it. If there are no quite, oh, a couple of housekeeping items. Um, I everybody's muted, so um, we don't have you know any background noise. If you want to ask a question, please do so. Just go into the either the question box or the chat box, and I'll just kind of be uh, watching um, to see um, uh, what questions there are. And um, here, let me do this. Okay, that's a little bit better there. All right, so let's hit it. Let's go. How to extract maximum sales and profits from your past customer lift list. Hey, Harold. Awesome. I, I don't know why. I don't know why this happens, but with GoToMeeting, I click a button and the whole thing like kind of goes away. I'm I'm gonna switch to Zoom pretty soon. Um, as soon as they let me do it around here, they don't let me do much. Every time I do something, I break it. <laughs> so they just let me come out here and talk. All right. So a few things here to talk about again. There you go. Sorry, I touched the wrong thing. All right. So I think that I think that we can all agree that uh, marketing and lead generation is um, is getting more expensive. It's not getting any. Uh, it's not getting any cheaper. It's actually going to. It's it's getting more expensive. Um, the cost. The average cost today of an issued lead um, is over $375. That's the average, not necessarily yours, but um, I know I know companies that are spending upwards of $500 for an issued a lead. That means an, a, a lead you created that you gave to your salesperson, all right? So marketing lead generation really isn't getting any any less expensive it's just it's just going to continue growing and uh, what you're going to have to 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 do is um oh wait a minute uh you guys actually can't see my screen now you can see my screen i've been talking and talking as if you guys could see my screen all right here we go thank you yancy um all right so um, what was I going to say? I was going to say that, oh, I, that today, you know, we've really got to do everything that we can do to, as my, my friend Joe Tallman from, from Yoho Organization says, we've got to do everything we can to kind of average down our costs, meaning that we all have stuff, lead generation stuff that's expensive, the leads are expensive, but to offset those costs, we need some low cost uh, lead sources as well. And that's what I'm gonna show you here. Done properly, your past customers should be a pretty low lead cost for you. Um, competition, you know, it, it's interesting. The better the economic environment is, the more competition kind of comes out, right? Because it is, there are so many jobs out there to get. So there's a lot of competition out there. Consumers have more options today than ever before, and consumers are really more distracted than ever before. 
So we got to keep all of these things in mind as we are growing um, our, our companies. And one of the things, if you've been on any of my webinars before, one of the things that you know I, I, I talk about is this idea of stealth marketing. Marketing that comes in literally under the radar. And this is all communication to somebody once they become a customer, once they sign a contract. This is some of the most powerful stuff that you can do because, I mean, think about it. Um, when you've got, um, I was looking for an example I could show you, but when you've got a, um, when you're doing any kind of lead generation, whether it's online, on TV, in a magazine, at a home show, whatever it is, your competition sees exactly what you're doing. They know what offers you're making. They know the headline you're using. They know where you're going. You know, they know all of these things. But when you are engaged with your past customers, how are they going to know unless they're on your customer list? Now, hopefully they're not, right? Make sure they're not. But how are they going to know? So everything that you're doing, all of the marketing that you're doing to that past customer list is all literally under the radar. They have no idea what you're offering. They have no idea how often you're hitting them. They have no idea. So this is some of my favorite kind of marketing because it gets very powerful at this point. The other thing, by the way, and we'll talk about this more in a few minutes. The other thing too, is that when you're talking with your past customers, now remember over here, we said competition's fierce, consumers have more options and they're more distracted than ever before. Look, if you do a job for somebody, right? And you don't communicate with them after that job is done, chances are real good, more so today than ever before. They're gonna forget about you and they're gonna forget about you like that pretty damn quick. You can't allow that to happen because what's going to happen? You're going to get somebody that comes up to you at a home show. You did their roof for them and they're going to come up and they're going to see at your home show that, and, and you know, this happens. They're going to come up to you in a home show and they're going to see, Oh, Hey, these, this is the company that did my roof. Hey, and they're going to come up and they're going to say, Oh, you guys did my roof. And then they're going to look at your, your, whatever your display is. And they're going to say, Oh, you do windows too? Oh, we just had our windows done if we only knew. Come on, you know that happens, right? It happens all the time. And if, you, if you're letting that happen, you're basically, you know, not making anywhere near the kind of money that you could be making or you should be making, right? It, and it's not their fault, by the way. It's not their fault. It's our fault. It's your fault, my fault. You know, if we let our customer go and buy something we could have sold them to one of our competitors, shame on us, shame on us. That's us being lazy, right? That's us not doing all of the things that we could do to protect that customer, defend that customer and keep them as ours. So the stuff that I'm gonna show you here basically is all, you know, like I said, targeted to past customers, but also everything is done under the radar and it's meant to really keep them uh, sticking. Now, this all goes to, well, why do we want to do this? You know, if I haven't convinced you yet, I'm, I'm going to work on it. And by the way, a lot of what I have to do when I do these trainings is I got to convince you that there's an opportunity. I know there is, I just have to convince you. And the, the question for you really is, is how painful is this in your business? Is this enough of a pain that you want to do something about it? Um, we, uh, me and Addy had a conversation this morning. Um, there's, there's, there's just uh, the home improvement industry uh, 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 listening in on this, <laughs> on this webinar, but I, I'm gonna share something. Uh, uh, conversation that we had this morning. Um, our teenage uh, daughter, one of them, um, is uh, she, she wanted to skip school today. And she wanted to skip school today because of bad habits, because she's staying up late. She's on her flipping device, 
you know, at all hours of the night. And and Addie said, look, we gotta we gotta drop the hammer on her. We gotta we gotta punish her and we gotta and I said to her, I said, look, it's not gonna change the behavior. Not gonna change the behavior. We what we have to ask her is, is this how you want to live your life? And only when she decides that, hey, you know what, I don't really want that, that's the only time that she's really going to make the decision to say, okay, I need to put my device away. I need to get to bed at a reasonable time. I need to come home, get my homework out of the way so then I can mess around the rest of the time. It's the same thing with us making decisions on anything that we do, whether that's, you know, uh, a business thing or a personal thing. I mean, look, weight loss. Weight loss will not work until somebody absolutely 100% says, I'm done, I'm sick and tired, and I'm absolutely committed to getting this result. It's the same thing with your business, right? So if you want to maximize your profitability, right, and you're not making the kind of money that you could be making or should be making, or even if you are, but you're not, you're just a transaction-based business where you're just like letting your customers go until, you know, it becomes painful enough for you until you realize, man, I really am leaving a lot of money on the table. It's not something you're really going to want to change. So my job is to help make that painful for you so that you can go and capture these opportunities. Because my whole thing here is like, whether I do it for you or somebody else does it for you or you do it yourself. I want you to be as successful as you can possibly be in this business, all right? And um, so look, here are some of the reasons why you wanna do this. As we just established, advertising for new customers is not getting any cheaper or easier. Competition's not going away. Now, if you really wanna build a business that's gonna last for the long haul, if you really wanna build a business that's gonna provide wealth for you and your family, you got to have a base of customers. I say it's at least 35% of your business, at least if you're a replacement contractor, got to be at least 35% of your business coming from repeat, referral, word of mouth, your your um, everything, your relationships with your customers, at least a third. Look, if you're anywhere less than a third, you're going to be in trouble when things turn around. And and it's not going to stay like this forever. And and look, this is not doom and gloom talk. This is opportunity talk. Now is the time to take advantage of it. Now when things are good, you need to get that base of customers locked in so that they support you for the for for the rest of the for the rest of your days. And the only way you're going to build also build real wealth in this business is by being as profitable as you possibly can be, which means that you know, you've got to have a way of generating leads that are not costing you more and more and more every year, but at least staying, you know, at a reasonable number. Um, we got you've got to do everything you can to prevent your comp your customer from going to your competition. Got to stay top of mind with your customer because, like I said, they'll forget you. And again, it's not because they're not loyal. It's not their job to remember us. It's our job to make sure that we're continually reminding them the, of the value that we provide. You want to give your salespeople an unfair advantage in the house. Right. And here's how you do that. Put them in front of what I call friendlies. Put them in front of your past customers. Put them in front of people that can make referrals. Right. Because your past customers have value. There, there's really a number of ways. I, I always say you got to have the mentality of job from job. Every job you get needs to turn into another one, whether that is through your customer doing another job with you or that customer giving you a referral or you getting business from the neighbors, right? Those are the, those are the ways that you're gonna multiply your effectiveness, right? And the more of those people that you put your salespeople in front of, the higher your close rate is going to go. And then of course, you know what this is all about. It's about maximizing the profit that you get from each customer is also maximizing the lifetime value of that customer. 
everybody, this is what leads to wealth in this business. This is what leads to equity in a home improvement business. You know, your your equity in your home improvement business is going to come from your people, your processes, and your profitability. And what what buyers will want to see is, and this is a very dumbed down version of it, but they want to see two things. One. When I give you that big check, I want to know that when I step in tomorrow and you step out and right, that the money that you told me your business makes is going to keep making that money when you step away. The other thing is they don't want to work. So they want to come in and make sure all those processes and systems are running so that they don't have to come in and work. That's a dumbed down version of how the only way you're ever going to be able to sell your business um, ever. Okay. The only way it's ever going to have any value. So um, I think a lot of you know who I am. I put, always put these slides in here just because if anybody's new, um, I think the most important stuff here, I'm not going to go through my whole long bio, but you know, I've been in the home improvement industry now for almost 30 years i started when i was 21 i just turned 50 so almost 30 years i've been in in home improvement uh, my company g4 marketing group works with you know some um very successful home improvement companies around the country we provide done for you marketing services we're also um, the creators of the wealthy contractor program which uh, i think all of you all of you are on the list you get the podcast of uh, um, we just released an episode last week. I've got another one coming up. I'm actually interviewing somebody today. Uh, that's going to be a really, it's going to be a really fun podcast um, episode. We put on events. We we're we're just getting ready. Just a little sneak peek that Accelerate Live, our annual event. Um, you're going to start to see the um, promotions for that um, the week of the 15th of October. So we got some cool stuff going on, but um, you know what we do every day is we work with our clients and developing, nurturing their their uh, uh, past customers and helping them make more money, um, lower their lead costs, get better quality leads by working those customer lists. All right, so that's a little bit of who we are and what we do for those of you that don't. Um, that don't know that. So there's really kind of two approaches here. There's two approaches here. One is what do you do with, so imagine, you know, kind of drawing a line in the sand. I, I, I actually I should have maybe put a line here in the, in the slide, but on one side, you've got everybody um, that you did previously. So let's say today is the line in the sand. Okay. So everybody you did before today, with that group, you have to have one strategy. We call it customer re-engagement and reactivation. Basically, we want to get them back, okay? Then we've got everybody going forward. So you got a decision to make after today is, uh, is, is do I want to make sure that every customer I get from today forward, I put a cage around, I put my arms around, so that all of the strategies and things that we're talking about here, um, so we maximize the value of that of that customer. Um, so I'm going to show you what both of those things kind of look like in order for you to um, take advantage of this. So customer reengagement and and reactivation is basically waking up your old customer list, going back to your old customers and um, talking to them again, um, re-engaging with them, and then getting them to give you more money or refer you to people that they might know. Now, there are a few ways to do this. So we've done, we've done a number of different campaigns um you know throughout the years for different clients we've got one right now that's just working killer i mean incredibly well and and essentially what it involves is sending out 
uh, basically, thank you, we appreciate you, and we miss you. And it's an offer that goes in the mail. And we say that this is kind of an example of what one looks like here. Um, it's not, this is not exactly what it, what it looks like, but it just kind of gives you an idea. Greeting card, it goes out in the mail and um, there's a pretty strong offer in there um, for, for a past customer. And um, that's one approach that's working incredibly well. Um, we've done other stuff where we send out letters um, where we do a customer appreciation those work well. Um, you could actually, one thing that I did not include here, but is also very powerful, but it's a pretty advanced strategy is you can actually do a customer appreciation event, like a physical event at your uh, facility, at your location, depending on your, your company. And I, I, I know some people in the industry that have done incredibly well with stuff like that. But the basic stuff, let's talk about the basic stuff. The basic stuff is what I've got on the screen, phone, email, mail, and text. And let's talk about each of those for a minute. So I think with a lot of companies that have a, um, a phone room, uh, one, one, one uh, company calls it their communications room. Instead of calling it their call center, they call it their communications room. And um, so basically what they do is they've got all these people that are on the phone that are you know, basically banging away at the phones, primarily to set leads, primarily to set leads. But in some cases, they'll also call on past customers. This is an okay strategy. It does work. It does work. But by itself, it's annoying. If you're the customer, play customer for a minute, Six months after the job is done, you've never really heard from the company, right? You did the job, you paid them, and you never really heard from them again. But now here they are three months later, five months later, six months later, a year later, calling you up saying, hey, this is Brian from Brian's Window Company. How are you today? Great. Well, look, I just wanted to let you know about a special we're running this month only for past customers. That's okay, but now what is the customer here on the other line? Oh, it's time for me to give you more money, right? That's why you're calling me. Calling me because you want more money, not because you care about me, but because you want more money from me. So it's an okay approach. It is effective. It does work for some people. It doesn't work as well as it can on its own, okay? By the way, none of this stuff works on its own. That's why I take a holistic approach to everything that we do. I don't use just one media. I wanna use a number of different medias. The next thing is email. So people use this and they say, and I'm not hearing, it's funny, I'm not hearing it as much as I used to, um, uh, but people say, oh, I email them. I send them email. Why? Because it's cheap. It's easy. Well, guess what? Cheap and easy rarely makes good quality leads. Right. So there was a time where there was a lot of companies that were offering like an email newsletter that they'll do every month. They'll send it to your customers. And that's kind of gone away. And I have I used to get it a lot. I used to get people ask me, well, uh, how much to just do the email newsletter? And I'd say, well, I ain't doing just the email newsletter, but on its own because it doesn't work. So you want to go do that with somebody else? Go ahead. But I take a more holistic approach and it just doesn't work by itself when it's part of an overall strategy, it does work, okay? So for example, if you're going to email people, you want to use email, build a relationship, build a relationship, give value, give value, give value, then you can hit them with an offer. Now, when you hit them with an offer, if you follow it up with a phone call, your results will go up. If you send out a piece of mail and follow it up with an email, right? You can bump the response, okay? But on its own, standalone, it's not enough. Direct mail, my favorite approach, by far my favorite approach, works most effectively. But even that entirely on its own is not nearly as effective as it could be 
when you couple that with phone and email. Okay, so these are all approaches that you can take. And I'm gonna show you some examples of, of you know, what this looks like. You can see some stuff here, you know, on the screen. Um, text messaging, this is the new biggest thing. My buddy Mark at Marlamar has the best texting platform by far for home improvement companies. When it comes to setting leads, you gotta be using texting. But when it comes to communicating with your customer, and you can ask for a review through texting, we do that for our clients. We send out a text on their behalf asking for reviews. But I'm not using it yet to market to customers. I, I think that, and, and I haven't seen any data on this that tells me it works. So I'm not doing it until I see data on it. Um, I think it's I think that it will it it will have the opposite effect of what we want. So I'm not doing it yet. There are some people that are using it to ask for um, um, ask for business later. Some plumbers are using it in HVAC, but you got to be careful with how you use it. If you're in the replacement business, I'd be really careful to use texting. Um, I think it's going to be a, it's a little too intrusive. And it's a little too direct for relationship building. I think it's great. Again, call Mark at Marlamar if you're not using texting because as a front-end tool, it's amazing for setting leads, setting appointments, making sure that your salesperson gets in the house, rehashing, all of that stuff it's good for. But as far as a relationship building tool or a customer re-engagement tool, I'm not sold yet on that. But that's my opinion. Okay. Now, customer reactivation um, works. Um, we've done a number of campaigns. We this is a this is a uh, case study that we've got on our website. You can go and read it. Um, this campaign that we built for um, for this company, window company, they hadn't reached out to their to their past customers in a long time. They didn't build relationships with them. And so we knew that going into it. So we designed the piece around the idea of, hey, look, we haven't talked to you in a long time. It's important that that gets acknowledged. And um, we were able to help them pull almost $300,000 in sales from that past customer list. And I think it was at like a five or 6% lead cost, which I'm always, you know, I always wanna stay under 5% if we, if we can, um, but where you're gonna get the, how you drive that cost down is by how well you establish relationship with people ahead of time. So for example, I have a, I have a client, I use them as an example a lot because they've just, they get it, they're doing it right. And that's my client, Aries Roofing. You know, they did over $20 million last year, or about $20 million, 80% of their business. And it used to be 50%, then it was 60%, then it was 70%. Now it's 80% of their business comes from relationships that they've developed with their customers. I mean, they're talking $16 million in a one product company, Roofing. And their lead costs today are like, maybe one and a half percent, maybe two percent. But they're but but it's not because they're not spending money. It's because they're spending money on their customers. All right. They're spending money to develop a relationship with their customers, even the people that just get a repair, even the people that only spend a couple thousand or a thousand or a couple thousand bucks with them, they're spending a bunch of money on that person as well, because they know it'll turn into more business later, okay? So this customer reactivation thing, it's its one thing to have an old customer list that you've, never, that you've ignored, that you've done nothing with. And then um, there's a big difference between a list of people that you've actually been engaged with. There's a huge difference between the two and there's different strategies for, for each as well. So um, as I said before, you know, any type of mail that you do or email, you put the phone component 
with it and it'll increase your results three to 500 percent i mean it's really powerful following up uh direct mail with with uh with a phone call very powerful aside from so one of the other ways and this is a way that we do for our clients which is just works incredibly well is a print newsletter now this is to me this is the best media that you can use to reach out to past customers um, there's no better form of media if your newsletter is done right if your newsletter is done right um, it acts as a relationship builder it acts to engage with your customer it gets them to um, have good feelings about you um, and it gives you the opportunity to pitch them on your other products and services. Now you can do this with both on online and offline with an email newsletter, but an e like I said earlier, an email newsletter by itself, not gonna produce much. You gotta couple that with other media as well. Now, a lot of people don't like mail, direct mail. They've had bad results in the past and so they kind of shy away from it the reason you had bad results in the past quite frankly is because probably now I'm this is not a blanket statement i shouldn't make a blanket statement for everybody but chances are very good that you did it wrong okay uh, I, now i've done trainings on other uh, there's other trainings that you can get that talks about how to create effective advertising and marketing but if you don't create the right message to go to the right market the media that you're using is that's not going to work and in a lot of cases what people will do is they'll blame the media for something that was not the media's fault direct mail is an amazing amazing vehicle for to, to, to it, now look to make leads it, it takes a lot of testing okay but to talk with your past customers there is no better way in fact it's the way that they prefer that you stay in touch with them okay now what's happened is the whole you know the whole mail thing has changed because of our phones because of the because of the internet and that's why a lot of people don't like it but because of all of that mail is a great place to be because there's a lot less competition in the mailbox there used to be a time where your mailbox early 2000s your mailbox was flooded with mail flooded and a lot of that if you if you remember a lot of that was mortgage stuff refinance your mortgage but you know there was they were spending a fortune on direct mail at the time well, now there's not as much competition, although it's coming back again. And I say that I show this, oh man, I have it. You know, I'm going to release this as a podcast to all the podcast uh, people that are listening to this through the, through the podcast. You're not going to be able to see the graphic, but I'm going to get like, all of you that are on. Give me a second because I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind. Hold on just a second. Let me go get it. All right, so there's the whole argument about digital, digital, digital. We gotta be on the internet. Of course you have to be on the internet. Yes, great. But you gotta be in the mailbox as well. Now look at what I got in the mail. I'm gonna put this up to the screen. Can you see this? Can you see who this is from? Yes, I got a direct mail piece from Google. Google. I'll bet you, chances are good, you got one too. Do you think Google is going to send out direct mail with an offer? I, and, and I'll tell you what, to their credit, to Google's credit, this is a damn good piece. Damn good. 
Okay. Damn good piece. I said that three times to, for effect. <laughs> um, and it's promoting Google ads. The offer is great. Get up to 150 in Google ads credit when you spend 150. So basically what they're saying is spend 150 bucks and we'll give you back 150 bucks. Great offer. And it's right up front. Google's using direct mail. Google. And you aren't. Right? Direct mail works. Right? You got to be doing it. You got to be using it. Now, look. On the front end, like what this piece is, it's tough to make it work. I have clients that use direct mail and they use it very, very effectively. But I'll tell you what, you got to know what you're doing to send out direct mail and have it make leads on the front end. But on the back end, after you've got the customer to build the relationship with the customer, there's no better media, no better media. Again, remember, stealth marketing. I love mail because I can come in under the radar. I can send an offer like we constructed for our client, some of our clients where we're reactivating customers and their competition has no idea what we're doing or how we're doing it. And so as a result, we're pulling hundreds of thousands of dollars out of old, basically dead customer lists, okay? Um, another thing about mail is it's got to be touched. You got to pick it up from the box and you got to go through it. Now, you got to create a piece that gets that there's A pile and B pile. Um, a pile is uh, stuff that you want to keep and look at. B pile is stuff you got to imagine when you're doing direct mail that somebody's looking at their mail over a trash can. And what you don't want is automatically to be thrown into the trash can, right? You want to create a pile mail. And so some of the stuff that we do for our clients, for example, sending out an a, a, a mailer in what we call our grandma envelope gets opened because we basically make it look like what grandma would have sent you back in the day, right? So you got to be really careful with with all of those all of those pieces. The other thing to consider is who's your customer today? Who's your customer? Older, they like getting mail. You know, even so, it's funny. The whole thing with millennials, um, even they like getting mail. By the way, there's been studies. I don't have the studies to show you. You can look it up um, if you don't believe me. But even they like getting mail, believe it or not. Um, nice thing about mail too versus like email is that email can get instantly deleted. Mail, you've got a little bit more time to get their attention, a little bit more time to get yourself placed in A pile versus B pile, okay? Um, so, Newsletter to me, uh, newsletters are my favorite. I and mean, that's the, that's one of the main things that we do here. I'm gonna show you what our newsletter looks like. If you want us to do it for you, we're, you know, I'd love to talk to you about that. Um, but with, with newsletters, I mean, look, you can increase with the, with the right company newsletter, um, there's a number of benefits to it. One is you increase the number of times your customers buy from you. Why? Because you can promote your other products and services. So if you do roofing windows, siding gutters, or roofing windows and bathrooms, or whatever, right? Even plumbers, you know, plumbers, HVAC, I'm sorry, I'm not talking to you as much, but with you guys, you know what I do with, the, with your newsletters is I say, okay, we want to drive people back for service calls. Yes. And we can do that all day long. We have strategies and tactics for driving them back to service calls. But what I want to do is I want to make offers on your most profitable, most expensive stuff, right? So for those plumbers that it, we've had great success with our plumbing clients that also do like bathroom remodels, where when we're sending out the newsletter, we're talking about bathroom remodels. The offers are for their highest end stuff. But for those of you that do like exterior replacement or even with bathrooms, how many of you do windows, but you also do one day bath 
Well, you got to let people know that you do one day back. That's the place to do it. Referrals. I'll show you how in our newsletter, I'll show you, a, I'll go through a, the, the, basically the anatomy of a killer newsletter, company newsletter, and I'll show you how we use our referral rewards program to drive more referrals, okay? Um, this is a great place for you to introduce new products and services. We're working on one right now where we've got a client that's introducing a new product, and so we're going to use the newsletter to, to do that. By the way, we're also working on one for one of our clients right now where we're doing a big referral push. So we created on their insert, we created uh, a whole big thing, just driving to referrals. A good newsletter helps you build sticky relationships with your customers. Um, it helps to keep your customers away from your competition. And most importantly, it helps you stay top of mind with your customers. It helps them not forget you. Because remember, you gotta keep showing up. You gotta keep reminding them of who you are, the problems you solve, the products you offer, and how the hell to get a hold of you, okay? And mail has staying powers. Newsletters done right, they have staying power, okay? So like I told you before, Look, I want to protect and defend my customers against the competition. I don't want my customers going to my competition for something that I can sell them, right? I want to stay sticky. I don't want to lose the opportunity for referrals because I didn't stay in touch with them, which by the way, is one of the big reasons if you're not getting a lot of referrals, that's one of the big reasons you're not. It's because they forget about you. Uh, uh, referrals can't be a three or four day strategy. Referrals have to be a three or four year strategy, right? And a newsletter is the way to do that, okay? So again, so now I'm gonna wrap all of this up here for you and I'll show you, um, for you, those of you that might be interested, I'll show you some of the ways that we might be able to help you. But here's again, why you, why you wanna do this. Advertising for customer, new customers is not getting cheaper or easier. Competition's not going away. They will be when the economy turns, but that's only because, and, and, and then and you're gonna have other issues to, that you're gonna have to deal with when that happens. But when this economy starts to turn a little bit, you're gonna notice a lot of the competition going, but right now they're taking stuff away from you. So your job is to get as many customers right now build as many relationships as you can right now. And I, like I said, at least 35% of your business coming from repeat and referral. If you're in home services, by the way, that number is more like 55% plumbing HVAC. But that base of business that you develop now, those relationships you create now are gonna help you not only survive when things turn, but it's gonna help you thrive, okay? Because as these companies are going away, right? You're going to have the opportunity to really blow your business up when things slow down. Um, this is what's going to give you real long-term staying power and really build wealth for you. Um, it's going to help prevent your, your customers from going to your competition. It's going to help you stay top of mind. It's going to give your salespeople an unfair advantage when they're in the house, when they're face to face with uh, with prospects, and it's going to help to maximize the overall lifetime value of each of the customers that you have. So um, if you have any questions, put them into the box now. What I'm going to show you here is um, I'm going to show you um, what we're doing for newsletters. By the way, if you're interested in us doing the newsletter for you. Our newsletter is called the Happy Home Gazette. Um, it is carefully constructed. It's very strategic. We've been doing newsletters for 20 years. And so um, there are certain things that we have found that work and things that don't work. And so this is our you know, years and years and years of experience and millions of newsletters delivered um, this is our version of a good company uh, newsletter. Um, we do it all for you. Um, basically, um, we get some information from you and we um, customize each newsletter for you. Um, this is the back panel here. Uh, we do a movie trivia contest. 
by the way, this is the referral program that I was talking about. Um, whoever does newsletters with us, also they get our referral rewards program as part of it. Um, so we are going to be giving away a new um, smart uh, TV, 55 inch sharp TV. Um, we, by the way, just as an aside here, um, the reason we do a contest and we give stuff away is uh, because it gives us an excuse to show up every quarter. We do a quarterly contest. It gives us an excuse to show up every quarter and talk about referrals. That's why we do it, by the way. That's a little behind the scenes, little Jedi mind trick for you there. Um, this is what the inside looks like. Um, always an offer, movie trivia contest. Um, we do a recipe. We follow a proven format that, this, that we, by the way, we didn't develop this format. We've just been, just from our experience over the years, these are the things that we know get us the best results. Um, for some of our clients also, we do a two-sided full color insert to promote their other products and services or anything special that they may want to talk about. As I said earlier, you couple any of your direct mail efforts, including a newsletter with the back end phone call, oh my God, your results skyrocket, okay? Um, and then we also have customer reactivation. Depends on your situation. We have to have a conversation and learn a little bit more about your business before we can make any specific suggestions on what we think might be the best approach. Almost everybody, by the way, can will benefit from a company newsletter. And, and the real decision is not whether or not you want to do a newsletter. The real decision comes from how far back do I go? So do I talk with my customers from you know three years and 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 in five years and in one year and in there's there's I can't give you all the criteria now it's just I got you know we have to talk to you and we have to ask you some specific questions and then we can determine and and give you some ideas of what what we would recommend but more than likely if your business is more than three or four years old you know i, I have people that come to me that have been in business for 20 years and they say well i have 10,000 customers and um you know what can we do for them and i'll say i don't know about the whole 10,000. what i would do is start with a much smaller group um, I go back, you know, in, in some cases, I'll go back two or three years and we'll, we'll target that group and we put them, you know, we put them into one bucket and then everybody else, um, I'm, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of money on them because chances are good they don't remember who we are. And uh, so there's, there's other strategies and things that we could test on a, on a limited uh, money basis. Um, just to see if they're responsive or unresponsive. I don't want to do a whole big mailing um, to an old, old uh, list that's never been communicated with. Um, anyway, so these are things that we're happy to to talk with you about and help you um, help you come up with. Um, we do our newsletters um, in January, April, July, and October. Our October uh, newsletter is being worked on as we speak. It drops the second week of October. Um, if this is something that you are interested in, um, we are um, very happy to speak with you um, about it. Um, let me do this. Um, um, yeah, the, the last chance to get in uh, really is uh, coming up. 